Hello, what's going on? A push peeps. We have Key Concept 7.2 for you. This is the revised edition, the most up to date version of Key Concept 7.2. You will find. Before we begin, a shout out time, I'd like to give shout outs to Mrs. Ferguson's class at Weir High School, Central Valley Academy in New York, Mr. Dollar's class in Texas, and Mr. Liebernack's class in California. So, thank you all very much for watching and best of luck to you. All right, let's take a look at what Key Concept 7.2 states. Innovations in communications and technology contributed to the growth of mass culture while significant changes occurred in internal and international migration patterns. So some big idea questions you should be able to answer are, how did technology transform the standard of living in the United States? What factors led to immigration restrictions during the 1920s? And what caused internal migration to increase drastically in the United States during the first half of the 20th century? All right, let's go over to Roman numeral one. It states popular culture grew in influence in U.S. society even as debates increased over the effects of culture on public values, morals, and American national identity. So during the 1920s, especially, we have new mass media that helps spread culture and awareness of regional cultures. We have things like the radio, which is very, very popular. This is a large source of entertainment, whether it is through War of the Worlds in 1938, fireside chats during the Great Depression with FDR, in which he would talk about how it, the economy is safe and, and Americans should put their money back in banks, or the very popular radio shows of Father Charles Coughlin during the Great Depression. Cinema is very popular during the 1920s. We have Nickelodeons, which are these nickel movies. And movies entertained many during the Great Depression. And in 1927, we have... The Jazz Singer, which is the first movie with sound. Regional cultures de developed during this time. Yiddish theater portrayed experiences of American Jews, and they would influence English-speaking theaters later on in America. And Edward Hopper wrote about the loneliness of the modern city. Keep in mind, in 1920, more people are living in cities than in rural areas. So we have the Harlem Renaissance during the 1920s huge part of American history. This is a celebration of African-American culture through writing, music, and art. And here is one of the most famous members of the Harlem Renaissance, Langston Hughes, in his poem that reads, The night is beautiful, so the faces of my people. The stars are beautiful, so the eyes of my people. Beautiful also is the sun, beautiful also are the souls of my people. So it was really reinforcing the idea of celebrating African-American culture and experiences. As I just mentioned, we have Langston Hughes, and we also have Zora Neely Hurston, who was very popular during this time as well. There are restrictions on freedom of speech during World War I. The Espionage Act of 1917 and the Sedition Act of 1918 are two examples of this that made it illegal to criticize the war effort. And these restrictions on freedom were upheld during the court case Schenck versus the United States, States in which Charles Schenck was convicted of interfering with the war effort. And the Supreme Court said, if you pose a clear and present danger, if your speech poses a clear and present danger, it is not guaranteed. We also have the Red Scare, which is fears of radicalism, communism, and anarchism. And the impacts of this are there are going to be attacks on unions and immigrants. Governor Calvin Coolidge, he stopped the Boston police strike in 1919 and became very famous nationwide. And that actually helped catapult him to the vice presidency of 1920. So let's talk about some controversies and debates in the 1920s. We have gender roles. So flappers, these women, challenged gender roles. They would drink and dance and smoke and wear shorter dresses. Margaret Sanger was an advocate of birth control during this time. That was very controversial. We have issues of modernism. Again, as I mentioned, the 1920 census. More Americans are living in cities for the first time. And many workers lost autonomy because of the popularity of the assembly line. So workers became easily replaceable. There are conflicts between science and religion. Look no further than the Scopes trial for this. This is literal interpretation of the Bible versus evolution. John Scopes was put on trial for teaching evolution in a public school. And there are race issues as well. In 1919, we have the Red Summer. This has nothing to do with communism. Most of the time when you see red, think communism, but not the Red Summer. These are race riots in northern cities, most notably Chicago. Immigration as well is very controversial during the 1920s. You have the rise of nativism in the 1920s and the resurgence of the KKK. And of course, Sacco and Vanzetti, two Italian immigrants who were charged and convicted of murder and later sentenced to death in the 1920s. 
Okay, key concept 7.2, Roman numeral 2 states economic pressures, global events, and political developments called sharp variations in the number, sources, and experiences of both international and internal migrants. So prior to World War I, European immigration reached its zenith, or its highest point, and this gave rise to nativism in the 1920s, which then gave rise to restrictive immigration quotas. So in 1921, we have the Emergency Quota Act, which restricted immigration to 3% of a country's population in the U.S. according to the 1910 census. So only 3% according to the 1910 census could come to the United States. Well, three years later, Calvin Coolidge, the former governor of Massachusetts, signs the National Origins Act of 1924. And this further restricted immigration to 2% of a country's population in the U.S. And he used the 1890 census instead. And this also flat out excluded immigrants from Asia. So in addition to being restrictive to targeting new immigrants from Southern and Eastern Europe, it also restri outright restricted immigrants from Asia. So what are some reasons for internal migration to cities or urban centers? World War I and World War II saw economic opportunities in cities for war production and labor. During the Great Depression, the 1930s in particular, you have people like the Okies who fled the Dust Bowl to California because farming was so dried up in the Great Plains, many people just packed their bags and moved out to California. And this is what the book, The Grapes of Wrath, is about. The Great Migration started this circle of my highlight. You have to know it's very, very important. This occurs during and after World War I. This is the movement of African Americans from the South to the North and the West as well. And you look at these cities. We have Chicago and New York. Those are in the North. And then cities like St. Louis in the West. And African Americans are moving in large numbers to the North and West. So what are some reasons? Well, they're escaping segregation because of Plessy versus Ferguson allowing for separate but equal facilities. They're also escaping racial violence, whether it's from the KKK or lynchings. And there's also limited economic opportunities because many African Americans in the South were sharecroppers. So they're moving to the North for economic opportunities, but they still face discrimination in the North just as they did in the South. Okay, many Mexicans came to the U.S. for economic opportunities during this time period, and they faced ambivalent or contradictory government policies in the 1930s and the 1940s. So many of them, about 500,000, were deported during the Great Depression because there weren't enough jobs to go around. So the government deported or sent out of the country many Mexicans. Now, during World War II, the U.S. instituted something called the Bracero Program, which, is in, which the U.S. encouraged Mexican immigration during World War II as a labor source. And many of these Mexicans would work as farmers to help out in producing goods for the war effort. All right, we'll finish up with some test tips for multiple choice and short answer. Absolutely no changes in technology in the 1920s, things like the radio and cinema. Causes of cultural and political conflict, the Harlem Renaissance, Absolutely know that. And the Red Scare, the impacts of it, as well as the causes. The Immigration Acts, they are restrictive against Southern and Eastern Europe and flat out barred Asian immigrants. The Great Migration, this to me screams a great short answer question. What were the causes and impacts? And for essay questions, migration opportunities, this could be part of a larger essay on World War I and or World War II, especially comparing and contrasting World War I and World War II, and comparing the 1920s to another decade, for instance, the 1950s. They are kind of similar. And finally, cultural conflicts of the 1920s. Thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate it. look forward to seeing you right back here for Key Cuts Up 7.3 when we'll talk about this meeting at the Palace of Versailles. Best of luck on all of your exams and have a good day.